One other thing we always say is that a connected world is a better world. And we really think it. We really believe it. We are in 23, and I'm not just seeing this as a lever to increase the productivity of the industries, which is the case, and it's going to be very useful for the world. But also, if we could uh, make it better, the work of all the developing countries, NGOs, that would be very, very great. Welcome to Afnet Silica's We Talk IoT. We'll chat with innovators, experts, and business owners to learn how they are implementing IoT and using data to create new business opportunities. I am your host, Stephanie Ruth Hader. Today we will discuss an aspect of IoT that is often overlooked but critical for connecting the unconnected, satellite IoT. With a growing demand for reliable and secure connectivity in remote and underserved areas, satellite IoT plays an increasingly important role in bridging the gap and providing real-time access to critical information and data. My guest today is Gianluca Redolfi, CCO of Satellite IoT, and we will discuss the evolution of Satellite IoT, its key concepts, real-world use cases and benefits, and future trends. Welcome to the show, Gianluca. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you very much. And uh, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. I'm really excited to learn about satellites and space. Why don't we get started by introducing you and Satellite IoT quickly? Yeah, so my name is Gianluca Ridolfi. I'm, um, I'm Italian, living uh, and working uh, in many countries in, uh, in the world, all the time, specifically in the mobile telecommunication. So... I've been uh, exposed many, many times of the challenges of the unconnected. And this comes out for a very simple reason. All the cellular licenses in the world are uh, imposing by, by the governments, of course, mm -hmm. to, to have coverage wherever human beings are, wherever people are. So we're talking about cities, towns, villages, and roads. Now that the uh, technological evolution has been going farther than just connecting uh, people, but we are connecting more and more things. And it started, of course, in the city, in our houses with the dishwasher and the, the fridge and uh, the TV and, and so on. But then it went into basically any industry. There is the need of connectivity for Internet of Things mm -hmm. in places where humans are not. So uh, that's a big gap. If we look at the world as it is now, the cellular coverage is everywhere around between 10 to 15 percent of the Earth's surface. So we have about 85 plus percent of the planet that doesn't have any kind of connectivity, if not for by satellite. It's really weird from a Western perspective to think that we are actually really the happy few, 15%, being able to connect uh, to the internet, 85% is really a big number. Yeah, actually, of course, this is because, as I said, it was meant to connect people and not things. And then if we go and we check at the satellite industry, satellite industry has been uh, quite an oligopolio because there are few providers and uh, all of them, they are on a, what we can call a proprietary uh, solution where basically you need to buy the equipment mm -hmm. by the same provider. You cannot use the equipment to connect to the satellite for another satellite provider. So there's a kind of captivity. But moreover, what is uh, more relevant is the fact that the pricing is, is very high. So mm -hmm. th these are not solutions that can be applied for uh, any use case. So what we bring to the table as satellite IoT It's something completely different, okay? Completely, completely different. So we've been working inside a 3GPP organization, which is the organization that sets the standards around the world with the big names from basically all the telecommunication and technology industries, so from uh, Sony, Apple, Samsung, and, and many others. You had Qualcomm, High Silicon, MediaTek, and so on. Mm -hmm. And... Um, From the space side, we've been the, the ones that have been uh, giving 
the highest amount of contribution through 3GPP. 3GPP works by contribution of each uh, member. So we've been uh, somehow from the space side leading this new release, which is release 17. There are different releases, so the, the latest one. And the key thing here is that it includes, for the first time in history, a standard for space. So basically, the same standard that we have in on Earth, on the planet, on terrestrial, is now extended to space. This allows very inexpensive, okay, cheap mm-hmm. RF modules, devices. So we're talking about few dollars that are already existing everywhere in the planet and are already being used and integrated in the ecosystem of solutions that are already used for cellular to connect without hardware changes okay. to satellite. Okay, And that's a big change of paradigm we bring to the table. Mm-hmm. We don't bring it as a satellite UT, we bring it as much larger view, which is the standard. We are the first mover. Okay, We think that we are at least a couple of years ahead of anybody for a LEO constellation, so covering everywhere on Earth with a very nice connectivity whenever you see the sky. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is going to open to many different applications because mm-hmm. what was seen as inaccessible because it was not economically viable, uh, now it's going to become viable. So if I am uh, a company doing optimization of uh, crops in agriculture, that I'm already doing it, mm-hmm. but I'm limited in the coverage, because I mean, d- depending on which part of the world you are, but you, if it's a big country, typically you don't have more than half of the agriculture fields covered by cellular. Well, now yeah. you can uh, simply take the same devices you have and put it on the part of the fields where cellular is not existing and they can connect to, to cellular. Thanks. Before we dive deeper into those use cases, I'm really excited about your experience in this field. And you now already gave us a quick overview of the current landscape and the satellite IoT market. But I would like us maybe just to take one little step back for users or listeners that have not too much experience in this field. Can you explain the concept of satellite IoT and how it differs from terrestrial IoT? Yes. So if we talk about what is Internet of Things, these are typically things that are connected. And uh, when you say things, typically there are meters, there are sensors, that are, then they're used by a software that typically is on the cloud to give to the final user a better way of operating their own business. Okay. Mm-hmm. In the example I mentioned before, for instance, in, in crops, in agriculture, Those companies, they are promising between 30 to 40 percent increase in crops. Okay. Because basically, with their devices that they put on the fields, they can measure a few aspects like uh, different uh, level of temperatures on the air, on, on soil, right, under the soil, the soil moisture, the wind, the humidity. And with all these components across the fields, they can recommend different types of action to the final agriculture company. Mm-hmm. On satellite, what we are uh, providing, and that's the difference with the terrestrial, is basically, finally, uh, everywhere on the planet uh, coverage. And if you are a final uh, user of this type of connectivity, you're basically not going to see the difference between the terrestrial or uh, if it's coming from a tower on the rooftop or it's coming from the satellites. That's the ultimate goal, to mix up everything in a unique technological um, solution, which is the same protocol, and make it seamless for a final uh, user between terrestrial and satellite. And that's the revolution. Mm -hmm. Okay. And technology trends that are relevant for satellite IoT. Can you talk a little bit about those? What technologies are behind this? You, I think you already mentioned LEO, that is, I think, stands for Low Earth Orbit Satellites. Instead of having satellites that are farther away from Earth, you have them in the, in the low Earth orbit, which makes it, I think, cheaper and uh, faster, I guess, and provide lower latency and higher bandwidth. And I think you also mentioned or we haven't talked about it at 5G network, that would also be something that is um, um, a technology that will really be beneficial for satellite IoT, right? Yeah, actually, so the big change has been uh, coming with what is called uh, new space. This happened probably 
around uh, 15 years ago, when uh, different things happened. L launching satellites became uh, much cheaper. The main driver probably has been uh, SpaceX, but not only. Mm -hmm. um, the CubeSats and SmallSats has been also a driver of it, which is basically having uh, much smaller satellites, the size of, uh, you can start from a size of a shoebox, or you wow. can start from a size of a packet of cigarettes. Some of them are really, really, really small. And um, using uh, not special electronics, but using uh, the same uh, consumer <laughs> electronics off the shelf. So make mm -hmm. it much, much less expensive. Mm -hmm. And launching mm -hmm. satellites, uh, more satellites, testing. So the world is much faster now with the new space than it was before. Okay. So we're talking about satellites that are costing a few million dollars compared to 500, 600 uh, uh, million dollars. Okay. And they can be built and launched in probably in uh, between one to three years compared to the seven, eight years of what was done before. So it, it opened many, many possibilities, including telecommunication. All those are on LEO, which is low Earth orbit. That's where the new space mainly is uh, happening. So what is low? Low is around 600 kilometers from Earth. Geo stationary are the ones that are not moving if you are on a specific place on, uh, on Earth. So if you look up, they're all on the same place, which basically means that they move at the same uh, speed as uh, Earth. They are much, typically much bigger. They last much longer and they've been investment much more with the uh, deep pocket than uh, the new space. Mm -hmm. And they are at about 37,000 kilometers. So not 600 kilometers, but 37,000 kilometers. So much, much farther away. So these new technologies, they are probably more adapted to LEO because of um, uh, lower latency, because of the fact that there's a um, higher technological Renew the these new satellites of new space. They live between five years, seven years, while geo can be there for uh, twenty years or more. So yes, the, all these new technologies are much more for Leo. Leo satellites they are typically sun synchronous, which basically means they are on uh, fixed planes compared to the sun. So the Earth is moving, and they cover everywhere in the planet from the poles to the equatorial lines to the uh, both hemispheres and, uh, and everywhere. This podcast is brought to you by Afnet Silica, the engineers of evolution. If you want to learn more about us, we have put information and links in this episode's show notes, and you can also connect with us on LinkedIn or afnet-silica.com. That's A-V-N-E-T-S-I-L-I-C-A.com. I suppose this is making it cheaper to launch these small satellites into low Earth orbit. And the technology you just mentioned opens it up for a wide area of industries where this would be interesting. I think you started talking about agriculture before I interrupted you. Why don't we dive into some real world use cases of satellite IoT and how this technology benefits, for example, agriculture? Yeah, so I mentioned agriculture where you can um, increase the productivity by about 30%. Mm -hmm. But this is uh, really applying to many, many different uh, verticals and use cases. So livestock, it's a huge one. How can I think about livestock management? Do the, the cows have a chip in their ear that connects to a satellite and then I can see Maybe if, I don't know, a herd has fallen off a cliff or if it has been stolen, what, what scenarios can I imagine when you speak of livestock management? Yeah, typically devices are, are put all around the, or it's a ear tag or um, it's a collar. Mm -hmm. And basically the companies that are developing this, they give solution about, of course, positioning. They know if they're sick, they know the temperature, they know many things about uh, uh, oh, each wow. cow. So it's they, actually a really a cow connected to the Internet of Things. Yes, yes. <laughs> wow, yes. that's incredible. <laughs> yeah. So in uh, very extensive areas, it's very useful because they can uh, they can go for hundreds of kilometers and you still know where they are. I think there are also some solutions where they have uh, what they call uh, digital fencing, which basically is, um, 
I think they put a little bit of electricity and whenever they go out of a virtual area. Okay, so to maintain the, the herd in the, in the same area. So all this is already happening. It's not that mm-hmm. it's not happening. Just it's limited to where the connectivity can give, you know, access to these callers or ear attack to retrieve the information to the systems. So with satellite, you can, of course, uh, basically have it everywhere. Just to mention a couple of uh, big plus of having uh, the satellites or under the standard, which is the 5G uh, standard, is the same device, which basically means it's a device which is dual mode for cellular and for satellite. It's very cheap, just a few dollars, as I said, because it's produced uh, massively. It's the same one produced for, for cellular. And you can still use the same uh, SIM of your mobile uh, telecom operator. As a company, as a satellite UT, we are a transparent enabler for uh, the satellite connectivity. We are an extension of the mobile telecom operator's coverage. So you basically continue using the same SIM, the same device of the telecom operator that you've been using, and it will work also as well the coverage. Now, I can give you some other nice... Mm-hmm. Um, so we have, of course, uh, logistics. Logistics is very important. Utilities, smart metering, smart grid. Mm-hmm. And then also <laughs> maybe uh, nicer or funnier um, use cases. We have uh, control of uh, bee hives, fisheries, and, and so on that are uh, less... The scale is, is smaller, but still mm-hmm. very interesting, still very interesting. Did you say beehive? Are you putting ear tags on bees? I guess. No, what uh, some companies are doing, they are um, able to control or to uh, listen to the vibration in the air. So the, mm-hmm. the frequency, based on the frequency that is done by the wings of different insects, they can know where the bees are. They can know if they're part of the same hive or it's an invasion, wow. or if also if it's an attack from other insects, and they can alert the companies to go and check. That's incredible. This also um, happens on, uh, on wineries. It happens on many other type of uh, crops where you can see if there is any plague that is coming mm-hmm. or is there, so that you can uh, really identify what is happening. You just well, apply the measures against the plague on the place where it's happening. And from your perspective, we've talked a lot about the benefits and opportunities um, of satellite IoT. From your perspective, what are the key challenges you're facing at the moment? There are technical challenges, for sure, because it's the first time in history that this is done. It's the first time that uh, what we call um, a tower in space, so this cellular tower that is put in space, this is new, and Mm -hmm. every time there's something new, There are a lot of uh, challenges because thinking that something is possible to make it happen, there are a lot of steps. And uh, it's just by doing it that we learn how to make it really working. So that's the process we are in. From the market side, I would say the market is very keen on adopting this. The appetite in the market is very, is very high. So it's not a big challenge. And then a challenge we had and I think we have less and less, is the change of mindset of many telecom operators and in the industry in general of telecommunication, mm-hmm. of thinking that all this is, uh, is possible, is a reality. I have to say that even if it's not connected to IoT, the fact that in last uh, August and September, and also lately, few announcements from uh, Apple, from uh, Samsung, Qualcomm, Radio, they announced and they actually have been showing that this is a reality that you can, uh, with a small uh, smartphone, uh, no big antennas that are typically associated to satellites, you can still connect to the satellites. This has been a big changer because people have been realizing, oh, wow, that's possible. That's a reality. Standard is something very critical to make it possible for massive uh, adoption. If we go back to the, I mean, everywhere in history, whenever it is adopted massively, it's because somehow one standard or two standards are created. You can go back to the video cassettes that mm. were not. Beta uh, and VHS. <laughs> the VHS. I mean, yeah. they were there. And then uh, not necessarily the best one in quality on technology is the one uh, winning. 
but mm. for sure it's the standard one. Okay, so we can go back to VHS, you can go back to uh, Microsoft and the OS in the 80s. You can go back to the apps that were, of course, in the phones, but nobody was developing it until uh, this true ecosystem has been uh, set up. You can go back to GSM, that at the end is the one that, that has been uh, making it uh, phones and uh, and the tech app in the last uh, 25 years. Mm. So whatever, whenever the standard gets in, it uh, take it all. So I'm pretty sure that in this case, it's going to be exactly the same, that the standard will take it all also on satellite IoT connectivity. When we look into the future, so we've been talking about standardization and now the challenges you've been facing, but when you now look into the future, five to 10 years, what do you think, what trends can we expect? What can we look forward to? One of the things we always say is that a connected world is a better world. And we really think it, we really believe it. We are in 23, and I'm not just seeing this as a lever to increase the productivity of the industries, which is the case, and it's going to be very useful for the world. But also, if we could uh, make it better, the work of all the developing countries, NGOs, that would be very, very great. And actually, we are in uh, we are signing partners with the most important ones in the world. But also with many things that should not happen anymore. I can give you some disasters. A glacier that we don't know is, is disconnecting and uh, can kill people. Or it can be people that are uh, lost in the oceans and, and they have life jacket, but we cannot uh, you know, locate them. So I hope that these type of devices will become uh, so cheap to become a commodity that then every life jacket in the world will have a uh, a GPS locator that can always transmit to the satellite the position. And the same uh, for the people that are uh, lost or they are uh, somewhere to guide them or to make the rescue teams uh, aware of where they are. Mm. And uh, in 2023 and the next future, th this should be really a common thing. This is um, really some very inspirational ideas you have. And I always love that on this podcast, we can bridge the link from super cool high tech technology stuff and bridge the gap to real world problems we are at the moment facing. And you mentioned climate change and observing glaciers and um, the migrant crisis, of, of course. Um, so thank you. This is really interesting. I always like it that we can show how technology could actually help solve these problems. So the last thing I would like to ask you is um, if I wanted to explore the benefits of satellite IoT further as a listener and thinking about a potential solution and how it would benefit my business, what's the best advice for our listeners? How should they go about considering and decide whether satellite IoT is a good solution for them? So the best thing you can do, of course, is learn more about us and the new technology. This is not just us, but it's a full uh, standard ecosystem that is uh, being uh, set up. We are just the first mover. We have a team that uh, is very happy to explain uh, what we're doing and how we can uh, be useful for uh, basically any, any application. Thank you, Gianluca. It has been really great talking to you and having you on the show. Thank you, Ruth. Thanks, really. It's been a pleasure to share uh, these moments with you. And again, we are hoping really that we can make the world better connected and to make the world better. This was Avnet Silica's We Talk IoT. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe and leave a rating. Talk to you soon.